Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm going to show you two reasons why you should be creating worksheets for your OneNote pages rather than setting up your content and your questioning on the same page. Let's get straight into it. All right, so as I said, going through two reasons why you should be setting up your OneNote pages as content on one page and separating the questions and things you want the student to do as a worksheet or generally set up as a sub page to that page. And the two main reasons for that is one, distribution, and two, reviewing the student work. So I'm gonna go through each of those in a bit more detail. Looking at distribution, I guess it goes back to our OneNote best practice. So it comes under these couple of points here, Ideally, you only want to push out what you want the students to actually edit or review individually. So being able to create a content page and a worksheet, we can keep the content in the content library where it's read-only. Kids can still click on links, watch the videos, do everything that they need to do, but they only actually push out the worksheet. So that's what you actually want the kids to be able to type in, edit, use the draw to, whatever it is that you want to do, that's what you're actually sending out rather than sending it all out together because Ideally, um, we want to keep our OneNotes working quite efficiently. So if you have quite some large files or even just a, a number of content and information on pages, once you send that out, you're creating 20 or 30 copies of that. And all of a sudden, if the file size is 10 or 20 megabytes, your time is now by 10 or 20 as you're sending it out to every student. If you do that by across obviously a lot of pages and things like that, it's going to really start to bulk up your OneNote. So we want to keep it nice and working efficiently and only send out things that we want the kids to actually review on. If you have any more questions about reviewing student work and how to distribute pages, you can find some of our other videos there. And the second one I want to look at is reviewing student work. And this is about just trying to make your life easier as a teacher to get a quick snapshot of whether the kids have done their work or whether they haven't done their work. So I'm going to show you two different examples of a Borrowing, so content and worksheet together in this one, looking at borrowing in a year nine personal finance unit. And you can see, pretty simple, I've got some of my content, my success criteria, a couple of quizzes, some pictures. And then down below, as it starts here, we now have what's like the worksheet part of the page. Now, there are obviously some advantage to this, that it's all there nice together, okay, for the students to be able to scroll up and down and find things. But I find when reviewing student work, as I'm going to show an example in a minute, it's a little bit slow and a little bit harder to get a quick snapshot of whether kids have done their work or haven't done their work. So what I generally do with my setup is I'll create a page for borrowing. So this is my content page and this will remain in the content library. So it's exactly the same as we just looked at. And then what I'll do is I'll create that information on a new page or a worksheet. I generally have worksheet at the top just to identify the kids that it is a worksheet, um, but that's that same information that we went through before. So the kids, that's the only thing that I would send out to kids. They can even then go and fill that out. Now let's have a quick look at the difference when reviewing student work between each of those. So I've got one already preloaded here. Um, this is a my fake OneNote that I've been looking at. I'm just gonna refresh that and go back. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and I'm now going to show you the difference between reviewing student work in um, this class notebook by looking at the two different pages that I just went through. We're going to go into our personal finance unit because that's where I distributed the pages. And you can see I've got those two pages that I showed you just before. First one we're going to look at is the borrowing plus the worksheet. So we've got everything together in the one page. I'm going to hit next and let's have a look at Matthew Beaton's work. So you can see well, here's our worksheet. But if I want to see his work, I do have to scroll down a fair bit to actually see what he's done and how much he's done. If I want to see Troy's, same thing, start at the top generally. I'm going to have to scroll down and find information. Troy's done pretty well in this lesson, just skipped his reflective thinking. How did Jesse go? Jesse didn't do his work. So that's obviously preloaded. Normally it starts at the top um, just because I was reviewing this before. It's coming up sort of halfway down the page. And Nathan's obviously scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. It's a little bit slower to be able to quickly review the student work where if I have a look at just the worksheet, this one here and click next. Now we have a look at Matthew Beaton. Straight away, I can see his worksheet and I can see how much he's done and how much or maybe he hasn't done, okay? And if I'm able to quickly click through those students, which sometimes during a lesson, you just wanna quickly see how the kids are going 
or after lesson, how much did the kids? You just want to, you don't have time to give too much feedback. You just want to quickly sort through your class and see how much they have or haven't done. And that's a very easy and quick way by separating the content and the worksheet. It's straight away there viewable uh, when I use that review student work or if you're using the assignment feature in Teams, it's going to be exactly the same. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video or took something out of it, hit the like button below. If you have any feedback, questions or suggestions for upcoming videos, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section. And make sure you subscribe for all of our latest ideas, tips and tricks on everything OneNote.